We gather to sing all his praises. We gather to worship the King. We gather to hear of his precious love, his grace into all lives he Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're so glad you joined us today. We're going to be speaking in 1 Peter chapter 2 today. That'll be our text. 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to begin with reading in verse 4. Give you time to find that today. We'd like you to, as we always do, we'd like you to read that with us with us today and find this in 1 in Peter 2 verses 4 to 9. And when you hear the uh, thought for today, that might have not been the exact passage you would go to when you think the theme of today. Well, what is the theme? We'll share that as we look at the verses today. But as we look into this passage, Peter is writing here with some of the strongest thoughts that we can have, foundational thoughts. And we hope to convey those today as the Lord leads through these times and these words, and I want to be able to say that and convey, because there are misconceptions of things in the original words here that talk that people confuse, and we'll address a few of those in our introduction today. But today, the thought today is I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the solid rock. And if you're a believer... Our prayer today, you know that you have believed in the rock, the rock of ages, the solid rock, the chief cornerstone. But as we look into these verses today, we think and share this, I'm standing on the solid rock, and I hope you are. I hope you're standing on the solid rock. If you don't know him, you're on a shaky foundation. But I am so thankful today that I am standing on the solid rock. And those who believe in Jesus Christ, who is the rock, you're standing on the solid rock today. I'm standing on the solid rock. Let's look at this passage. In my Bible, it gives some words to help us as we study. It says, The chosen stone and the chosen people. Later in this passage, it will talk about Believers are a peculiar people. But in this we see the chosen stone and the chosen people. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are, are being built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. 
Father God, through these moments together, Lord, we're thankful today that we have a solid foundation. For those of us who have believed and are in the family of God, we thank you today for having that and being our rock. And Lord, as we look through these verses today and share these words, you be glorified in all that we do today and lift it up. In Jesus' name, amen. In our worship already today here at South Holland, we have shared a few songs that dealt and led up to the thought today, I'm standing on the solid rock. And when we look at this, we think we are, we know we're standing on the solid rock. We sang and shared today the wonderful song or the thoughts from the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. A phrase that comes from our hymn. We shared today that Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And I thought that from a song, His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. And as we've worshipped together already today, we thought of a song, a traditional song, Jesus is the cornerstone. The cornerstone. And that song shares, even in stress and trials, he is there, and it's a solid foundation. And He is the cornerstone. He is the rock. We could even relate to, or relate to one of our wonderful Southern Gospel songs that I used to grow up. I grew up hearing this one. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. That rock being Jesus. There is hope in the rock. As we think today, I'm standing on the solid rock. There's a song that puts it this way. Through my disappointments, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. The chorus puts it this way. I'm standing on the rock of ages, standing on the rock, on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages. I'm rich, but not from Satan's wages. I'm rich, not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. Even though he's gone now, I don't feel alone now. With comfort came the Spirit of the Lord. Now with his word to guide me, from temptations hide me. I'm standing on the solid rock. The last verse, and hear it for the journey we're on now. Now I'm pressing onward. Each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation. So on the solid rock, I'll stay. I'm standing on the rock. The solid rock, safe from all the storm that rages. I'm rich, but not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. The songwriter got it pretty right there with those words of testimony. And today we share with that same thought, we're standing on the solid rock. In a world that, folks, that many people even go, there's no real absolute truth. There's nothing that's ever really this way. Or this happens this way. We, that is our way in, li in life. But let this pastor today say to you, there is one when that does not relate. He is stable, he is certain, and he is my rock. He's your rock if you believed in him. And for those that are watching today in this time of worship, if you need that stability, if you know that one, as that Southern Gospel shared, I'm never alone because he says he never leaves us nor forsakes us. He is the rock. He is the rock. And you can trust in him. And you can trust that because he is the solid rock. He is there. And he loves us and he cares for us. When we look at this verse today, and we're looking at this passage that he says he transitions to talking about the people of God. 
being that they are a chosen people. But he mentions this clearly, that Jesus is the cornerstone, the one chosen, as he gave in these verses. In verse 6, Therefore it is also contained in the Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elected, selected, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. There is one way to heaven. We believe in Jesus Christ. It is not a good cause. It is not the commercial that many times, and I'm not meaning this negative, that will even bring me to tears. It is not those causes. It is not an event. It is not because of your heritage. Well, my mom and dad were, so I think that gets me in heaven. It's not that. It's a belief in Jesus Christ. And it simply says this in 1 Peter, that it says those who believe on him will by no means be put to shame. That means separated or rejected. But you believe in him. You're a part of the family. And he who believes on him, the cornerstone, being Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone. He needs to be there and have that, that solid place in our life because he is settled. He is the one who is sure. But Jesus is, and I'm standing on the solid rock. Let's first of all look at some things in this passage that talks about the rock. Now here it refers to it as a stone. But yes, let's use that word rock today as we look. Number one, it's a supernatural rock. Supernatural rock. Now hold on with me for just a few minutes on this part. The church is Jesus. It is those who believe in him make up the body of Christ. The church foundation is Jesus. He's the only way to heaven. We believe in him. Now, these next words come from someone who has known church, has believed in church, and known in place. And you've heard my illustration of how I'm thankful for neighbors who became the first uh, missionaries in my community. And I eventually led to riding a bus to church. And, and, and people placing life and investment and all the things and the mentors that I'm certainly appreciative in church, and that's, my, that's what I've known. But please hear this, Pastor, this morning. The church is not the building. The building is where we come to meet. And it, it is there for us to be in those times that we come. The Word of God says, do not forsake the assembling of believers together. Many folks want to put that in all types of different connections and contexts. Where are we going today, preacher? Where are you going with this? The building is not the church. Now, it is church, as we say. We're going to keep the church right. We're going to clean the church. We've all said that. We're all going to put the church sign up. But the church is the body of Christ, is a living organism. Our ministry, church doesn't begin here. Now, I'm a detailed guy. I'm going to put down, this is when we meet, this is when we true, this is where we go, 11 o'clock service, whatever. But our church begins when we go out the door. Preacher, be careful now, we won't come to church. We do. That is fulfilling the ministry of the Great Commission. We reach them with the gospel. We love them. We teach them about Jesus. And the Bible says clearly that when they're coming into the kingdom, they're immediately not going to be all of a sudden mature. We're going to have to be there and see them come. Many folks that come and know Christ and trust them, 
First time you think even in our country, that, hey, you mean y'all have y'all do that? Y'all do that? Y'all have this? Y'all have that? Yes. That's the body of Christ functioning, you see. But when we look at the cornerstone of Jesus, being Jesus, it is not a building. Matter of fact, when we relate to temple in the day we're in now, what does the Word of God tell us is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It's our body. Now, are all the things that we're saying, uh, the preacher's changing, he's against this in churches, not no. That's what we should do. We should be here and serve him and be here and draw from each other because that's what he wants us to do. We want to serve because we have a common, we have a, we have a one, we are in unity, we have one message, we do have one church and it's built on Jesus. But the church is the body of Christ if you look at the scriptures. When you really study that out, and I think most would agree with that, but I wanted to stop here just for a moment today and say that and get to understand our the church is the body we are part of the body of Christ and we're all in different areas if we have the belief in Jesus Christ we also as I've said we have one word we have one message we have one Savior we also have one destination don't we what's that destination if we believe in Jesus Christ where are we gonna go we're gonna go to heaven but it is based on the rock. It is the belief in the rock. And Jesus is the rock. Are you standing on the solid rock? Have you believed in the rock? I'm standing on the solid rock. First of all, we see supernatural. It's a supernatural rock. Now, we've seen some big rocks, and you might have gone on trips and field trips and stuff through the years and family vacation. Say, boy, that's a big rock. That's a physical rock. See a big rock. Isn't that rock large or a boulder, as we might say? But Jesus is a supernatural rock. He's a supernatural rock. He's not con controlled by any that we want to put man-made issues with. He moves as he needs. He answers as he needs. He is there for you. Not only is the rock a supernatural rock, the rock is a select rock. Verse number four, let's look. Verse number four, he says, Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but watch. Have you missed this? But chosen by God and precious. Not by Brother Mike's words today. Not by sharing today from this pulpit. But from God's word. Will you please hold that deer this morning and see it? right from God's word, that he was chosen by God and precious. His son, Jesus, the rock. He is a select rock. Now the rock is Jesus. Let me say this again. The rock is Jesus. Preacher, you've repeated it. The rock is Jesus, not Peter. Not Peter. When the statement was made in the, con in the conversation between Jesus Christ and Peter, when it, Peter made his comment relating to Jesus, Peter said, Upon this I will build my church. But that was a little rock. The statement he made was the confirmation that Peter recognized who he was. The church was not built upon Peter. Peter is not the cornerstone or the chief cornerstone of a church or the church. Now hold to that this morning. But that I felt like as the Lord was preparing that needed to be said at this moment. Peter is not the head of the church. He is not the cornerstone of the church. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. It's upon him and that's Peter recognizing with his words that Jesus was the rock. Because if you look in the language that was shared there, that statement was said to Peter, in that you are a little rock. I am the rock, and you've recognized me as Savior. And he said, upon him, being Jesus, 
he will build his church. But it's a select rock. Not any like it, not not any like any other rock. But I'm standing on that select rock today. Jesus Christ. He was a select rock by the Father in the place that he was in. The select rock. He was chosen by his Father. And not only is it a supernatural rock, or he is a supernatural rock. Make sure we say it that way. He is a supernatural rock. He is a select rock. But in verse 4, again we see, coming to him, coming to him, us, to a, as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God. Notice the word rejected, because he was rejected, wasn't he? He was rejected by men. He came to offer that, and they rejected him. You saw the result, the cross, the terrible death that he gave for sins of the world, all of our sins. But he was rejected. Verse number 7, let's read it. Therefore to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The rejection was there, but it didn't change the fact that he was the chief cornerstone. They rejected the message of the cornerstone. Notice this. When we look at the rock, he was called the slighted rock. The slighted rock. Where would you see that? By the rejection? He was slighted. He came to the people. And he was rejected. And he was despised. He's a slighted rock. Giving the message of hope. Of all those three and a half years that he came. And he taught. And they rejected the message. Would you not say to me today. With me today. That he was a slighted rock. He was a slighted rock. The rock there that was given. The message of not just hope. But the message of peace. The message of eternal life. And he was rejected. And today, as even as you view today and as we worship together here, there are those who continue to slight the rock. They slight the rock. It's not, not important to me, preacher. I'll get around to it. Well, I grew up having a round to it Sunday. We used to give out little things and say round to it on it. And if you're a believer and you're getting around to some things at church, you do, that's okay. But if you're an unbelievable, unbeliever and you're carrying one of those tokens or you want to carry that attitude in your life, please, today, change that. Not get around to it. I'll get it when it's convenient. Because we never know what tomorrow holds. We never know what tomorrow holds. Don't slight the rock. Don't slight Jesus. Jesus is there with open arms to receive you. Don't slight him. He didn't slight us. He went to the cross. He came here. He went to a garden and prayed, Father, if this be your will, let it be. Let this cup move from me. Not that he wanted out of the plan of his Father. He was in physical exhaustion. But he was here to complete the will of the Father. And he went through all of that pain and agony for us. But he is a slighted rock. He was a slighted rock. And he continues to be the slighted rock today. Number four in verse number six. Let's look. There is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Thus, the next S would be the solid rock. Our message today, I'm standing on the solid rock. This verse says he is a solid rock. Notice how it describes it. I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect. Man, I love this word, precious. Precious. And it couldn't be any plainer than this. And he who believes on him, the rock, will by no means be put to shame. Believe in the rock. No unbelief. There is unbelief out there. Settle that if you're under these words today. Trust in him. He'll never fail you. Jesus, the rock, never fails. He is the solid rock. 
He is a solid rock. You see it there in verse number 6. He is the solid rock. Where today are you as a believer in your faith? You've settled that. You're in the family. You're in the, you're in, you're in the kingdom. You're standing. But in, that, in those few words of song that we opened up with today, and even thinking about the solid rock and things, so many times do we look side to side and find those things that we trust here that are going to be temporal. They're going to go away. But what we do for Jesus will last. And it's those things that will be put up treasures in heaven that we do here. I pray if believers today that are in our fellowship here and that you that are watching will be able to say, yes, Brother Mike, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the solid rock. Even I won't be, maybe even as Peter, as you mentioned Peter about not being the rock, Peter was one of the dear disciples, and Peter was quick to speak in many occasions, and Peter was quick that night to step out onto the water, wasn't he? And as long as his eyes was on the Savior, on the rock, on Jesus, it was solid, wasn't it? He was walking on the water with Jesus. But what happened when he took his eyes off? He took his eyes off the master. He took his eyes off the rock. And he looked side to side. But don't dwell on that as some pastors do. Nothing negative. But let's look to the end. Where did he look to when he knew he was about to go down? When he knew he was drowned. About to drown. About all the sea around him. All the water flashing around. And he was down in the water. Who did he look to? He looked to Jesus, and he knew that was his source. He's the rock. He's the master of the sea in that situation, but he's the rock. And Peter saw sure foundation. I'm standing on the solid rock today. Are you standing on the solid rock as a believer? You say, I am. I'm in the rock. I know. I trust him. Continue that. Be strong. Be steady. Be faithful. But if you're one of those that have treated him, oh, by not purpose, but by the rejection and by the disbelief and the unbelief. You've put him by the category I've given today. You've made him the slighted rock for your own personal decision. And today would be the time. I don't want to slight you, Lord. I'm coming to you. Whatever I've done, I'm going to confess my sins. I'm coming to you. I want to trust you. I want to give my life to you. That's my prayer today. For those believers to continue faithfully as we serve him together, we stand on the solid rock. He is our rock. For those that may not know him, trust him today. The message is there. Trust in him. Admit, believe, and confess. Trust in the rock. He'll never fail you. He'll never fail you. Join me today in standing on the solid rock. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege to share these words today. I pray that you'll bless, Lord, this message now. If there are those that do not know you as Savior or struggling with that decision, uh, with that, I pray that they'll make that decision today. And Lord, if they, not, not today, but if they have questions and they can get in contact with someone or even with us, we'd love to be able to help. Lord, I pray for believers today that that are walking for you, that may be facing some struggles and, and stumbling a little bit, know that they can stand strong in you and come back and say, Lord, I want to be strong in you. I want to be faithful and be found faithful. Thank you for your word today. Your word blesses our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.